Hi, I'm Roger, I'm from Hotfoot, and we're here today in this commercial building which has a pigeon infestation, and we're going to show you the right way to install our bird repellent gel, and we're also going to show you the right way to clean the surface to protect yourselves and make sure that the surface is clean and ready for the application of the products. First thing we have to remember is bird droppings are very toxic. Never ever attempt to brush up and clean dry bird droppings. So we have a ledge here where the birds are using for, uh, for roosting. And we're going to show you the right way to clean this ledge first and protect yourself against any of the bacteria and the virus and the germs that's in bird droppings. So the first thing to do is to look at the protective equipment we're going to be, you should be using. Number one is a full face mask respirator. This is a respirator which covers your nose, your mouth, and the appropriate filter screws here onto the sides. You can find full details about which filter is appropriate to use by going to our website in hotfoot.com. I am going to wear gloves. We have gloves here. Any common glove that you can buy from any hardware store will do the trick. Second thing is I have in my ordinary garden sprayer here an EPA registered sterilizing solution. We have water, we have sterilizing solution that contains a little bit of detergent, 2%. We have an odor neutralizer and we have the sterilizing solution, EPA registered sterilizer. And what I'm going to do is take this ordinary garden sprayer and we're going to wet the surface down here now thoroughly. We're going to coat all of the fecal matter and give it a good soaking in this sterilizing solution. I'm going to leave that solution sit there on the bird droppings for at least two minutes to let it soak in before I do anything further. This has been soaking for about two minutes. I have a common ordinary hand brush you get from a hardware store. And now what we're going to do is we're going to brush these droppings here. And we're going to, you can see the droppings here. We're going to get this surface so it's completely free. The bird fecal matter. And you can see as I'm doing this, there's no dust blowing up. There's no fecal matter in my face. I am totally protected from any contamination that may be in the droppings. Having done that, a plain ordinary rag is good enough. Take your rag, wipe it across the surface to uh, clean off the excess of the liquid here. And then we're just gonna wait now for this to dry and this surface will then be ready to install our bird repellents. Having cleaned this ledge, we're now going to show you the right way to install Hotfoot bird repellent gel. And what I want you to notice here is that this surface is clean and dry. Now the Hotfoot gel is a two-part system. We have the bird repellent gel and we have crystal coat, which is a spray coating. Crystal coat performs two functions. One is you use the crystal coat spray always to spray on top of the gel. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But it is also used as a porous surface sealant. Bird gels are nothing more than a thick liquid. And if you put them onto a surface which is porous, like raw concrete, cement, masonry, unpainted wood, roof tiles, stucco that's not painted, then what happens is over time the gel will soak in. And as it does that, you will lose the amount that's on the surface and it will become ineffective very quickly. So if you have a porous surface, you should use a porous surface sealer. <clears throat> you can use crystal coat and one simple spray along the ledge is all we need. But if you have a porous surface, then you must pre-seal against porosity, otherwise your gel will not function. Now the gel functions by its stickiness. It doesn't burn or, or irritate the birds. It doesn't have a smell. It is the stickiness in the product that repels the birds. And what happens is when the bird stands in the gel, it thinks it's caught in a sticky trap because it can't move its feet easily. The bird panics very briefly emits distress signals which are picked up by the rest of the flock and the birds leave and they never return. So the trick with the repellent gel is to apply only the amount of product you need to repel a bird of that size. For sparrows and small birds, you need obviously a lot less than for large birds like pigeons. And we control that by where we cut the nozzle here on the tube. This nozzle has three graduation marks. You cut it at the top graduation mark to apply a bead of gel suitable to repel birds the size of a sparrow. You cut it at the middle mark 
to repel birds the size of a starling and you cut at the lowest graduation mark to apply a bead of gel sufficient to repel a pigeon. I'm using a regular corking gun that you can just buy from any hardware store and simply take your, uh, your cartridge, insert it into the corking gun, crank it up and we're ready to go. Now you'll notice this is coming out very easily. I'm doing a one inch track up and down and you'll notice that I'm not bringing the track right to the very edge of the ledge. I'm holding the track back about one quarter of an inch back from the leading edge of the ledge. The reason for that is when the birds come in and land, they're going to land on this part here and they may flatten it a little and you don't want it squishing over the edge. So having applied that, I'm going to take my crystal coat here. I'm going to do one brief spray on the top and there it is, the job's done. Now you can see this ledge is quite wide and one little track on the edge here is not sufficient to repel birds from standing back here. If you just want this edge protected, you got it. It's good, ready to go. But if you want to protect the whole ledge, you have to do multiple tracks that are set one inch apart. Let's now do a track for starlings and you'll see the difference. We've now cut the nozzle at the second graduation mark here. We've inserted our uh, cartridge into the corking gun and now I'm going to apply tracks of the repellent gel suitable to repel a starling or a blackbird of the similar size. So I'm going to start from where we finished the, uh, the track against sparrows and I'm now going to run this track along up and down. Now you'll notice now the track is heavier and also it's greater distance between the humps on the material. This is now I am running a two inch wide beam, two inches here and two inches between the humps and once again because this is a wide ledge, we need to do multiple tracks if we're going to protect the width of the entire ledge. So we should leave a two inch gap and run another track of repellent gel directly behind that. Okay, we've now cut the nozzle at the third graduation mark, which is going to enable me to apply a bit of gel sufficient to repel birds the size of a pigeon. And you can see I've now got a rather fancy looking gun here. This is our new Easy Flow corking gun. It's anti-drip, so the product doesn't continue to run once you release the lever. This is a beautiful product. Simply flip the lever forward with your finger, pull the plunger back, pop back the retaining clip at the end, drop your tube in, retaining clip back, plunger in, and now we're going to apply a bead of gel here which is going to be sufficient to repel pigeons. Now you will notice with this track here it's substantially larger. I'm actually doing a three inch bead up and down and I'm allowing three inches between the humps on the product. Now you notice there I've stopped and you can see there's no continuation of the gel. It is not continuing to run, it's not continuing to drip, it's sitting right there. This is a beautiful piece of equipment and if you're doing a lot of repellent, this is the way to go, an easy flow corking gun. Now once again, this is a wide ledge, so we should apply another track of gel, three inches apart, so only two beads of gel will be sufficient to, re to treat this entire ledge. And we will do that here. You'll see the pattern coming out. And now when you look at these two, three beads here, you're gonna see one that's suitable for sparrows, one for starlings, one for pigeons. See that? I stopped the corking gun once again. No continuation of flow. Now all I have to do is spray that with crystal coat. One brief spray across, shake the cam, one brief spray. One brief spray here. That's it. This crystal coat will dry in about 60 seconds. And it's going to dry to form a thin, brittle film over the top of the sticky repellent. Why do we do that? Because gels are sticky and that causes us two problems. One, atmospheric dust and dirt can settle on top of the product and it'll soak it up over time, rendering it ineffective. The crystal coat puts a barrier between the environment and the sticky gel and by doing that it protects it against dust and dirt soaking it up. We can get up to 10 years life out of this product with just one application. The second thing, 
is we use it to seal the porous surface, as you saw from our earlier presentation. But also, if the bird's feathers touch the repellent gel, they're not going to get it on their feathers. So it's environmentally friendly, and it's certainly bird friendly. So I can take my finger now, and I can touch this surface here. And as you can see, I'm not getting any sticky repellent on my fingers at all. The surface remains totally dry. When a bird comes into land, his small feet will crack through that uh, crystal coat coating. The gel will repel the bird, but the rest of the surface remains totally unbroken, unaffected, and will last for years and years and years.